Well, the weather is not looking great. It's a heavy, wet snow coming down, and uh, they predict that it's gonna drop probably a foot of snow over the next 24 hours. Um, and I've got about a five mile walk to my refuge. a little bit of cover underneath this um, house but um, the good news is I saw a plow go by so it looks like they're maintaining this road up at least until Rifugio um, Marmolada Castiglione so uh, I think what I'll do if they have an open bar there is I'll go inside and warm up eat something and then I'll continue that last mile to my refuge today um, and um, hopefully they'll have the highway plowed all the way to my refuge for tonight. I decided to take a short break inside this uh, covered part of the road and uh, I'm just really wet. I'm kind of tired. My back is kind of starting to hurt, but um, I've only got about maybe two and a half miles left to go for my refuge. Seattle. Yeah. yeah. In Italia, se pronuncia Seattle. Well, I was really lucky. I, um, when I communicated with the um, owners of this place, they, um, they said they only had vacancy for tomorrow night. And then I said, but I need a place for tonight. <laughs> and I just showed up and they said, well, we've had a cancellation. I was thinking, oh yeah, I've got a tent. I can sleep outside, but it is really cold outside. It's like 20 degrees outside and I came in and I ate something and I went back outside and all my equipment was just frozen. So um, I think it would have been a really cold, uncomfortable night if I'd had to sleep outside. I, I could have done it, but um, no, I'm really glad I got some place to stay. And now I've got to spread out all my stuff and try to dry it out because it's all wet and covered with ice. I'm getting out of here about 9.45, um, which is my earliest start yet, but still about, I don't know, an hour and a half to uh, two hours after I wanted to get out of here. But uh, I've got to hike down the road about three miles to get to the Fundi, Fundivia? Anyway, the gondola. So, um, and then I wish I could hike down the mountain, but I think only skiers are allowed down the ski slopes. Um, otherwise, it would have been fun to hike down the mountain because it's such a beautiful day out here.
Oh man, it was so cold up there. It was like minus 10 or minus 15 Celsius is what I heard someone say. <clears throat> that was the coldest droning I'd ever done. Uh, my hands were so cold I could barely operate it. I wanted to do more. I wanted to do more droning, but the problem is the wind was pretty strong and I was really at the operational limit of that drone. Um, and I could tell it was unstable and I was too close to too many people. So I didn't really want to risk the possibility of running into someone. So I just decided to kind of take it out and bring it back in. And, um, and then I had to bring it down. But uh, my hands and my feet were so cold that I could barely function. Anyway, I'm in the restaurant now. I just had to take the opportunity to eat in such a beautiful place. All right, well that was a lot of fun, but it was really cold. After uh, <coughs> I warmed up in that restaurant, I had a fun conversation with an Italian couple and we were talking about how difficult the Italian language was to learn. I'm heading back to my refuge right now, which is all uphill, but I expect it's gonna take me about two hours so hopefully I'll get back right before the sun sets. Oh, well that was a long, cold day, but uh, it was worth it. It was worth the hike, worth the money to go to the um, Punta Roca. I tried to get that drone to function. I just didn't have faith in my ability to not hit someone in the head with that drone. So I decided to just, I took it out real quick and uh, came back, but man, my hands were freezing. I had these bottles on the exterior of my pack and they froze. On the way back to the hotel, I uh, was coming up the road and I ran into an English guy who had rented a car and he got chains with the car but he didn't know how to put the chains on. So I helped him for about half an hour trying to put the chains on. Anyway, I'm gonna just relax, shower. Uh, dinner's at seven, um, and I'll probably just chill out in my room until dinner and then try to get to bed early because I'm leaving at 6 a.m. tomorrow to try to get back to Kanatse and catch that bus. It's about a uh, quarter after six right now. It's about 10 degrees. I've got to walk about seven miles to Kanatse um, to catch a bus to the train station and then take a train up to Innsbruck where I'm going to fly out on Sunday morning. And uh, I'll be making most of this road walk in the dark. But I've got my spikes on to just help me grip the ice because it's really icy out right now. Well, I'm in Kanatse now. I managed to hitch a ride from a young guy coming down the road. He was going to an ice climbing lesson, so <laughs> um, he was really fun to talk to but I think I might actually be able to get out of here by 9.30, so, which would be nice because I hate getting into my hotel late at night. That's my, the, my typical modest operandi.
We made it to Innsbruck after about six hours of buses and trains and other walking and other stuff. And now I'm off to my hotel. So far, I really love Innsbruck. It's really beautiful. But it is cold as hell. Decent looking room, um, decent part of town. It's a beautiful little town. Now I'm gonna go out and uh, see if I can get something good to eat. For breakfast. I'm still kind of tired, but um, uh, the receptionist made it sound like they have a good breakfast here, so I'm gonna take advantage of it. Last night I was looking at this place from the city down below and I was wondering what was up here. There's a gondola that takes you up here. The gondola costs about 30 euros. So I decided to take it up. I just wanted to come up here and see it. It's really pretty. I might try to get a little bit higher. said the last gondola was at 5.30, so I'm gonna go inside, get something warm to drink, and then head on down. 